essentially. Sorry, it's so gross. I wish it would <laughs> clean it up, dude. I swear to God. Okay, that's also, I'm not going to talk about it yet. Green tea. <laughs> I thought that's what you said. <laughs> right. I'm on to you. He's into it. He's choking <laughs> on it. So, um, Surigaya is kind of just like Japanese eBay, um, they sell a bunch of like secondhand stuff and there was a promotion last week for free shipping, so initially I was only looking for keychains, um, and I got this cool fully coolie one that's yellow, uh, but my regular keychains are almost all green, I noticed, like green and purple, and so I was like, Hmm, it'd be cute if like I got even more keychains and then had them like color coded so that they can be like an accent piece or like a little accessory. Then I was like, okay, I'll look for like a bunch of different color stuff. Uh, ended up getting so distracted because um, there was so much cool stuff and it was so cheap and with free shipping especially, um, they were they're all secondhand so they were already like three dollars to begin with. Um, the yen is also like super deflated. So, anyways, uh, I ended up going a little overboard. Um, but the stuff I got is pretty cool. Um, so, some CDs, some movies, some art books. Um, I don't know if I got more keychains. Uh, the one thing I went there to try and find. But um, this is a like 1999 uh, electronic CD. Um, recognize some names like Susumu Yokota. Uh, Basement Jacks, Square Pusher. Um, I don't know if Be Brave is like a cover of the Section 25 song, but yeah, I just want to listen to it and um, see what the stuff I don't recognize sounds like. I'm already pretty into like IDM and like 90s electronic music, so just took it as a sign, um, kind of like a blind date with the CD. Um, another CD I got was this Endorphin one year anniversary. Um, I think it's like a compilation album of a label, um, and the song that sold me was Poison Girlfriend, so I don't recognize anything else. Um, I know, like, Merry Christmas, Mr. Lawrence, but I don't know if it's like a cover or what the rest of this is. I see that there's like some dub, but, um, yeah, again, kind of just blind date, uh, $3, figured it was worth it. New CD for my car, at least. Um, then, first movie is I got Mind Game. Uh, not my favorite Yuasa movie. Um, it's kind of a weird postcard, I won't lie. <laughs> that looks pretty foul. Uh, but um, it's not on like, any streaming service. Um, so I have friends that I think would like this, but I don't know how to like show them. So uh, again, like five bucks, and I figured like at some point in the future, um, I will be grateful that I own it. So there's that, uh, another Fooly Cooly thing. Uh, initially I thought these were the manga, like, volumes, but each one is like a DVD, um, and it's a six episode show, and there's like six separate DVDs, so this is only the first episode. Oh, that looks really cool. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Some, <laughs> some character lore, I believe. Oh, that's cute. I like that. I'm gonna put that on my wall, maybe. Um, so yeah, I got the first episode. Um, not sure if I'll like, get the rest, but I do remember liking the first episode. So. Uh, this is a <laughs> Yoshitomo Honara shirt. Not much to say. It's, pink. it's cute. Then I got... This one is pretty cool, actually. 
a Masaki Yuasa art book, like a sketchbook. I'll, I'll open this um, afterwards and like do like close-ups. Um, but there's a newer sketchbook that he came out with that's like twice as big as this, um, like number of pages wise, and it looked really cool, but it was really expensive. And so this is like an older version that I got instead because it was like half the price. And I was like, yeah, that's just as good. Um, then another art book I ended up getting and is this uh, Shintaro Kago like print art book um, really psychedelic and surreal but thought it was cool um, not too sure I haven't like I did look through a little bit um, online but I haven't gone through like the rest in person this stuff can be a little hit or miss uh, sometimes it's like really um, intense but again cheaper than like some of the other things I was looking at so it was like the lesser of two evils uh, and then speaking of like Japan treats and trinkets my friend from Japan that I stayed with uh, earlier this year uh, came to America to come freak it and hang out and he bought uh, or brought some like gifts, um, some candy stuff that I've already devoured, and then he also got this giant ass like art book for Berserk, which is pretty cool. I won't flip through it because it's like not safe for work either. Um, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's just a little haul to start off. I'm probably the most excited about these CDs. I hope they're cool. I just read The Employees by Olga Rabin, um, and I did not like it, unfortunately. It's a book that I've had for a minute, and very recently, um, in like a bunch of friends on here's favorites of the year so far list, uh, her, her name has come up, so I was like, it's time. Um, like Benjamin Journal uh, mentioned, her recently uh, I think Nathan's Nook did as well I don't remember <laughs> their real name but uh Grandpa's Book Club also echoed Ben's recommendation of uh the employees and I think that Biblio Sophie did as well so after getting like four direct recommendations um in like the span of a week I was like okay better hop to it um maybe maybe like the hype and like the overwhelming praise was also part of it but yeah this was really underwhelming to me it is really short um and there's a ton of white space um like some pages will just be that um so it's really easy to get through i read it in one sitting it took like maybe like an hour and a half ish but i think like because there's so much white space and like so much just jumping between the things being out of order pause plot wise sorry i always do this uh, this book is about um, these like interview recordings of people on a spaceship and there's regular humans and then like robots that are like humanoid or human-esque. To me, that meant it was gonna be like a mystery and I was gonna be like, it was gonna be like unreliable and I was gonna be like, oh my gosh, am I reading from the perspective of a person or a, or a robot? I can't tell, what does it mean to be a person? Like, that's what it was in my head. It's not a mystery like at all. <laughs> there's very obvious like tells of people just speaking in like weird ways to let you know that they're a human being being like when i was born and had a father it was like oh okay versus like i have never been real it's more of like this sort of escalating or like mounting dread at the way that they're inhabiting the same space uh being like challenged and knowing by like reading their different perspectives that they have different goals and being like oh this is gonna go poorly uh there's also some like not like body horror but like some horror elements in terms of like whatever the fear of holes and like circles is there's some of that where like some like body horror elements of like skin being riddled by dots and like people eating excuse me people eating like pomegranates and like pushing them out in like gross ways um but 
Or I was like, oh, well, that's been done, like, better by, like, Paradise Rot by Jenny Vol. And once I, like, made that connection, I was like, oh, wait, a lot of these, like, elements have been done better in different books that are, like, equally as short. So I started comparing it to, like, a bunch of, like, 100-page books or, like, time-wise, like, an hour and a half long <laughs> stories, like, movies. And... Yeah, I could think of like a better example of like every element that this book tried to do, so I'm gonna name a couple. This is gonna come off as like so like hatery and like mean-spirited, but I, I don't know. This book just was so underwhelming and I feel like it's kind of like a massive waste of time. It's so disconnected and because like the passages, the statements are so short, the tone never really builds up consistently. Because like these two things are like one out of order and two completely different like subject wise it's like a really disconnected like building up of different themes where like it'll be like touching on identity and like kind of like what it means to be human like certain memories of, of earth that they miss now that they're on board this spaceship but if you want like disconnected musings on identity and like the legacy you'll leave behind or like the importance of memories i just read the years by annie or no you could read like the first 40 pages of that and like get such like a more concentrated and like well articulated version of that if you are like into like the scary like ooh, this is like sinister and the way that they're sharing a space together is like so claustrophobic and ooh, ooh whatever um our wives under the sea i don't remember the author for that but i'll put it somewhere it's like that but better and like again more concentrated and like just that theme like being built up over time instead of it like being just this like amalgam like jack of all trades um subject wise where like none of them really get highlighted well enough that i'm like this book was worth reading but form wise too uh because all of these are like recordings it's like just one person talking like monologuing there's a book called the Body in Which I Was Born, I'll put it, that might not be the name, but it's by uh, Guadalupe Natel, who is also a little bit buzzy. They just um, wrote Stillborn, uh, which was like Booker last year or something, but short story again, um, like a young uh, female narr narrator, like recounting her life in therapy. Um, and so it's just like her talking to a therapist, um, like a one-sided conversation. I just can't think of anything that this book does like uniquely better than something else that I've read that I'll, you know, like if, you, if you're into the surreal horror, like tripolomania thing, Paradise Rot is like really squeamish and like surreal and like gross. And it's also about people like inhabiting a space and kind of being like corrupted by it. Also just in terms of like page count, like if you're gonna spend a hundred pages on a book, there's so many better assembly by Natasha Brown. It's kind of like the gold standard of like a hundred page book under the skin. I'm a broken record, but that movie was so good. And like, it's the same amount of time, like an hour and a half to experience like a sci-fi story but by the end i feel like it was like transformative and like awesome and i can't stop thinking about it versus this where i was like already kind of ignoring it while it was happening i don't know uh, I'll, I'll stop being like a hater but really underwhelmed by this book unfortunately uh would not recommend it, it to anyone because again like i just feel like there's better versions of like anything that this book did um anyways that is all. I just wanted to get my thoughts out um, before I forgot, but yeah. Um, on a roll though. I finished Sirens and Muses yesterday, finished this today. I'm gonna read more probably because it's rainy and um, got nothing else to do. So yeah, uh, okay, bye, see you, see you in a second. Right. Uh, hopefully this sounds okay.
together. <laughs> I'm just gonna fast forward. First day, first day out here. Hey again. So I'm just here at my shrine of books. About to pick what to read next. And uh, before I do, and just kind of mentally shelf um, the employees and Sirens and Muses, I'd like to talk about the latter for a second. So Sirens and Muses is this like polyphonic novel um, four different characters who are all at residency in an art school and they all are at different stages of life. One is like one of the professors and then three of the students and like there's like a love triangle, it's messy, it's queer, it's like sapphic specifically and it presents a lot of like different perspectives on like class, the purpose of art and just like identity and like building it around portraying yourself a certain way in the art world and like online, namely in like the early internet age, it's like 2010. There's a part one and a part two to the book and it starts moving pretty fast in part two. And there are some character arcs, which I've been thinking about a lot. Um, one in particular is like the professor at the end. And for a book about art that, you know, does have like these like class and like political themes, it kind of fell flat for me in certain ways where a part of it I feel like is meant for you to dislike the choices that the characters make. Obviously it's like messy, it's dramatic, but the professor one also seemed very intentional in having him sort of betray a political ideology in return for like a better personal life. Part of, part of it I'm like kudos for like having it be ambiguous of like what you're meant to feel and also humanizing him as a character throughout the entire book so that by the end there's a part of you that is also just happy for him like good for him like you know he's gone through such and such like he deserves he deserves to be you know happy and like on the other hand what the fuck are you doing you hypocrite bastard um i don't that to me is like the the central takeaway of the book and like the sort of portraying yourself as some you know pseudo anarchist but like at the same time engaging in and like giving into commodifying yourself selling your art wanting to like ride the railroad tracks that have been built to gain like the whatever objective measure of success i just found it interesting i don't think there was like loud enough of a message or like the fact that it was ambiguous in the first place kind of rubs me the wrong way where I'm like say it with your chest like at least like that's a fine stance to take even though it is sort of like apolitical and like centrist whatever really clever but I also don't know if I'm like giving the book too much credit because some of the dialogue throughout got like really cheesy and like YA romancy where people are saying like stuff that's like tumblr quote bait where it's like you always mumble when you're drunk and it's like girl you are a 19 year old like no one talks like this <laughs> me giving a book that like does sort of like tropey romance silly ya things and be like this is like actually a really layered and like complex metaphor about like identity politics and part of me is like i'm jumping through hoops but another part of me is like kudos on getting a message that that's is that like weighted and sort of um alienating into a book that's like so consumable and like commercially viable and you can engage with this as just like a sapphic story that like centers around art and like that could get people in the door and then you sort of just plant these ideas you don't see anything like super overt but like have people rethink their own like internal like politics or like morality spectrum i don't know 
cool book. I enjoyed it. Uh, I didn't love it. Like the longer I stayed in that world, the less I was like super engaged and engrossed. Um, partially because the characters kept making kind of like bad decisions or like just became less likable. Uh, if you have thoughts, I am I'm all ears. Oh, my sweater's inside out. That's crazy. Um, anyways, that's my thoughts on that. I'm about to pick out uh, my next read, which um, I have this on the floor. Uh, Stefan Zweig. Uh, this is Beware of Pity, but I think uh, once I find it, I'm going to pick um, Post Office Girl. Because it's one that I've had my eye on. And a new booktuber, hey, hey again, um, their name was Talani Chu. And uh, they made their channel very recently, like in the last couple weeks. And um, I really liked their video. They made a video of like their 10 favorite books. And I thought the list was super diverse just in terms of like taste within the genre, but also genre wise of like nonfiction, lit fic, contemporary classics, um, some really cool picks. One of the authors that um, they spoke about was Stefan Spieg, and I've read two of his books, um, or one and a half really, uh, but Chess Story I liked um, maybe two years ago, and then a couple months ago I tried starting Confusion and didn't end up finishing it, but this um, really motivated me to try and read something. I think this is going to be my next read. But, um, yeah, I really liked their video. Um, their taste is really cool. I will like link them downstairs uh, to use the wise words of uh, Benjamin Journal. I'm probably gonna read this now, bye. Kiki, do you love me? Are you writing? Cause I never, never live you in the sun. by Albert Camus um it's cool so far there's some some philosophy bro vibes um of this guy who's talking to like a, a stranger at a bar and they keep meeting night after night and like continuing the story that keeps getting sidetracked it's kind of giving me um hour of the star uh energy where it's like the story is like about to be told like oh i'm like just getting to it like oh you know it's like perpetually postponing the story and then like the story itself just being made up of like the preface that never ends um yeah liking it i'm only like halfway through it so i am kind of expecting some big like revelation or confession oh uh, and then i also was reading uh, a bit of no one is talking about this by patricia lockwood uh, an internet novel from not too long ago but anyways it's like snarky um cynical super like terminally online and like poking fun at the like weird routines and like celebrity status that you can get from 
doing very, very little. And, um, yeah, I don't know. So far it's like very, um, self-aware slash satire centric, uh, enjoying it. It's, it's definitely like completely different, um, than this. Uh, but in here I have a little sticky note. Um, okay. So I listened to the new Discover Weekly, um, from Spotify and found a bunch of cool songs and cool connections that I was not aware of, uh, at the time. And I wanted to talk about them. Uh, there was a song by The Shacks, um, where they had a song called Crimson and Clover. Lighting is kind of ass. Uh, anyways, they had a song called Crimson and Clover, and there's an A.G. Cook song called Crimson and Clover, which is like the same. So I was like, oh, this is the original. I had been enjoying a cover. That's so, you know, nifty. And then did some more digging, and the Shack song, or the Shacks song, was also a cover of a Joan Jett song, which was a cover of like a band from the 60s called like Tommy Tommy Jones and the Sayers or something I don't know but it's like the fourth generation of Crimson and Clover covers cool to know that there's like an entire history of that I was like unaware of then another song um by a band called Jerk Cub uh the song was whatever uh, to be honest but there was a line in it that made me think um, something about like having dinner alone and it reminded me of well one I was like I have dinner alone kind of often and I'm not like that sad or pressed about it um, but then I was thinking like what I look like in the spaces I occupy and how they probably do look a bit like desolate slash lonely um it's like me alone at a table and like darkness and like headphones on uh but internally it doesn't feel like that so then I was like hmm being a little bit more aware of the spaces that I'm inhabiting reminded me very directly of a review of a movie. Uh, the movie is called Days and it is by Sai Ming Yong. And I just watched two of his other movies not that long ago. Um, so a director I've been like paying more attention to it was Goodbye Dragon Inn and then it was Rebels of the Neon God. Um, but Days is supposed to be like this very slow cinema, like meditative, um, looking at like men in desperate emotional states, but uh, really long takes. Some of them were like 10 minutes. And the top review uh, of the movie says something about like being hyper aware of going from room to room and like what you look like while you're just like in uh, occupying. It also kind of reminds me of this scene from Rear Window, the Hitchcock movie, of that one lady who's like lighting the candles and like getting ready and then eats dinner alone. Because in that context, sure, like that's, I don't know. I just don't always think of it as like a sad or like lonely thing, but maybe it, maybe it always is. And I'm just like blocking out the part that like is registering that it is. I don't know. Um, another song is Molly Nilsson, who their cover art reminded me of, what's his name? Andy Stopped. Uh, he does a bunch of like electronic music and all of his cover arts are like black and white photographs. Molly Nilsson has like a similar thing going on where like all of their cover arts are just like weird black and white, like abstract um, little things. Uh, just thought it was a cool connection. Their music was cool too. Um, I don't know if I'm like associating John Mouse uh, because of the name, like, he has a song called Molly, and so I'm just like, oh, like, there's already, like, a little neural network that connects them, um, but remind me of that, there's also, uh, an artist called Soko that was new to me, um, cool music, was into it, and then, like, reading their, like, artist bio, I saw that they were connected to Ariel Pink, that they, like, worked on Pom Pom, it's just really cool to, to know that, like, these artists that I'm not aware of have just existed in the background of things I was already consuming and like things that I've liked in the past um obviously Ariel Pink is you know like a a, a Trumpy now or like January 6th rioter um which kind of goes hand in hand with this book I, I guess um uh, but anyways <laughs> pretty cool 
Um, Robbie Basho is another artist who made an appearance in the Discover Weekly. Not a new artist to me, but a new song, and I really liked it. It's just like a purely instrumental. There are like definitely vocal elements, but like the bulk of the song is just guitar instrumentals, really intricate, sometimes fast paced, um, sometimes like really like open and like airy and meditative, but uh, really liking it. I've been on like a guitar kick uh, for a minute now. I've been listening to a bunch of the Daruti column, uh, namely the album Vinnie Really. Um, one that I kind of neglected uh, in their catalog, so I've been like listening to it a bunch. Then the last thing on here is CDs. Um, I had a bunch of CDs in my car. Um, I just changed the ones I was listening to today. Um, there was in, I chose an Apples and Stereo album, something like Velocity, maybe not. It's orange. Didn't really love it that much. Uh, track eight was cool. I think it's called I Want. Um, I liked that song specifically, and then I changed it to some rap songs. The Earl Sweatshirt album, hadn't listened to it in a minute, really like it, kind of forgot how good it was. Um, gonna hang out uh, with later tonight, um, probably in like a few hours to like eat dinner, or whatever. But the thing I'm most excited about is going to the old card shop that we used to go to, this like comic book store we like throughout middle school would go to like pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh card tournaments you also put like another niche one called card fight vanguard oh my god we were so like nerdy but we went there devoutly like every weekend for years i don't even know so we haven't been in a minute and um just like trip down memory lane it would be cute to go there again uh, i think one of the managers is still there um so maybe they'll recognize us but um, yeah, I started getting a little bit into Magic the Gathering lately. I've been playing a lot of like card games. It's kind of nerdy and lame, but um, we both started playing uh, Hearthstone a bunch um, and then got like Legend, whatever. And then from there, I was like, mm, card games. I kind of forgot how much I like those. And that's where we're at on that. I'm going to play some card games later. Going to eat some dinner. I'm going to... Chill with my little baby. Um, and that's that on that. See y'all later. Uh, hey again. Uh, quick thing I forgot to put on the post-it note. Um, that I just remembered is and this song by Boris came on. The cover art is like um mimicking that one Nick Drake album. Uh, but it's really cool and. It's kind of like sludgy rock and like grimy. I don't know if it'd be like considered metal, but like just really like droney and distorted. And the songs are like 10 minutes long. Uh, and it reminds me of another band that I think is really cool. Les Rallyzes de Nudes. That's the best I'm going to do. Um, but they have really cool music. And if you're into like whatever I just described, like droney, really distorted, um, long ass songs that are like Japanese sludge rock. Um, check them out, I suppose. Um, they're pretty cool. Okay.
<laughs> All right, I'm up. I just finished, um, whatever this one was, says. Uh, no one is talking about this. Um, I finished the fall, um, yesterday. Uh, they were, they were cool. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna fully form my thoughts right now, but, um, it's only 7 p.m. and I'm so sleepy. I've started working out, I'm on, like, week three. But I've been going to sleep so early. Um, I'm low key ready for bed. Uh, but the fall, um, both books, second half changed a lot for me. Um, there's a lot more quotables in the Camus. Um, it starts delving more into like theology and like religion and um, suicide comes up as like a major theme and like it kind of like unfair like absurdity of the world it's like really cynical um but kind of nice to read um although it didn't like have like a super concrete or like deliberate um message it was more like isn't this whole thing what a trip huh y'all um but they kind of related to each other uh, the books just because um the idea of like groupthink or how like one person can like semantically absolve you um or judge you and how like they're both interchangeable and then this book part two devolves into like um a lot of grief uh, and like rethinking of like perspectives and like values and how like a tragedy um can be like a great change of perspective um although it's like a painful lesson to learn i'm glad it ended <laughs> and then like the tone shifted because it started reminding me of like drew gooden humor uh or just like millennial like me talk funny because silly uh and it was kind of like bleeding into like past drew gooden and like into like jomney sun tweets uh which if, you know, you're interested in a book about being chronically online, I assume that you know what that me sentence meant. Part two felt was like a lot more worthwhile. Um, felt pretty moved, got a little choked up. You yeah, know, wasn't like blown away or anything. Um, it mentioned the movie The Elephant Man, uh, the David Lynch one with Anthony Hopkins. That movie's been on my list for a minute, so maybe I will watch that. It's not like late, so it's also the weekend, so. Uh, but yeah, two books, two more books down. What will I read next? I don't know, but it's super exciting to decide. Maybe something by Stefan Zweig, because I still have not started, and I said I would. Hello, um, back from the groceries and the bag out. And some canola, some almonds, some yo Greek yogurt, some cottage cheese, some more, where is it, some more Greek yogurt, um, little like flavor ones, some pretzels, and there's like a coupon for rice and frozen general so chicken, um, I got paprika because I ran out of that. What else do you want these? Ah, gotcha. It's actually fun. Uh, I thought something broke though. I got these um, Sour Patch Grape. That was like my treat. And I'm so excited. I have some more Pato Lore. I am a candy fiend. Um, I eat so much. Or especially I like, used to. I have like cut back, but like. I see this and I'm instantly reminded of this limited run of Crush, like the soda Crush flavored Sour Patch Kids that they had during COVID. Oh my god, the Grape Crush Sour Patch Kid. So good. Um, so I'm hoping this tastes like that. It probably won't, but um, I got that. Um, 
Got some Cajun sausage. Got some bell peppers. Some onions. The staples. Um, some veggies. Edamame. Uh, it's like a lo mein kit. Thing. Um, some protein bars. Uh, a sandwich. Some, some fish food. Some fish. Fish and veggies. Boring, boring stuff. Um, I think that's it. Basic stuff I already put away, like milk and eggs and chicken. Um, and that's it, I believe. Oh, I got this lentil soup. Oh, and your, you, the camera, are balanced on top of this like protein cereal thing. I've never had it, uh, and I don't expect it to be that good. But uh, I'm pretty skinny, and uh, I don't eat that much. So like, now that I'm trying to exercise and like, not count calories, but like hit like a certain amount of protein per day, I'm finding it a little bit difficult because um, I don't really, I'm not used to like eating um, that regularly and it's definitely a requirement. So I'm hoping that by eating things that just have like a higher number, um, I, I do that every day. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Anyways, that's what I that's what I got. Pretty healthy. Uh, I forgot to take my iron pill for today. Uh, anemic gang, shout out. Um, so I don't think I can actually drink coffee. Um, so. Yeah, I debated going home. Anyways, uh, I have The Idiot by Elif Bachiman and then Acts of Desperation by Megan Nolan. Um, like 40 pages into The Idiot, 10 into The Nolan. Gonna read uh, and not drink coffee, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that's all. See how long this all takes. Okay, um, it's 11.30, I still got some more stuff to do, um, but I'm probably gonna call it here, recording-wise, my little music, kitchen and myself, um, pretty good moment, very good moment, pretty very good moment, um, but yeah, the week is winding down, on to the next, hmm, I wonder what it will hold, probably more reading, more movies and more eating and more seeing friends and smiling and laughing and surprises and who knows what else um i 
We'll document it, I'm sure. Yeah, that's that's the video. Thanks for watching. Mm, I don't know what the next one will be. I've been kind of itching to make a scrapbook or like a photo album. And I keep putting it off. So video would be like a good motivator, probably. And I have a lot of... We'll see. Um, see y'all later.